we are going to ball out family. Today, we are in a jungle. And we have a reason with a top midfielder. A man who he not score regular goals. Every time you see a goal from the money, I saw a bummer from way outside the box. Even this man in a training, see the dog slap them in. Today, we are with the man with them called Delhi Ali. You know, Shavani Willis himself. How are you bro? Big up, man. Much respect for me, you know? Talk to me about the training session this morning. Playoffs coming up. See you guys are getting a good, proper training session. How do you feel about it? Yeah, mentally we're ready. You know, we're out there to do some finishing gel because the past game never scored a whole heap of goals. So now is the time. Uh, every chance we get, we have to finish off every chance, you know. We talk more about, you know, the striking because genuinely I feel like you're one of the best strikers at the ball in the Jamaica Premier League, you know. Mm -hmm. The way you hit the ball, it, it true, isn't it? Because if you type in Shavani Willis on YouTube, you just see a compilation of the money. Just a score beer banger from outside of the box. The same man score banger from him there, JC. Willis. Willis shoots from there. What a strike that is. Shavani Willis with his third goal. Yeah, man, it's a natural thing, man. You know, mm -hmm. I just a technique I have, you know, and oh, I kick the ball. As we can, we can pass it too, just like that, or we kick it. We can kick a dead ball too. You know, it's just a technique yeah. and, and I just raw talent I'm having. I'm work on it same way. I have it, but I have to work on it same way. I still watch like other players like Valverde and them players that we can kick the ball. Still have to watch them. No matter if I can kick it, you see, I just, I just some of the, do my little thing, you know. What your favorite goal that you score so far? That goal I'm scoring against Umbland the other day be my favorite right now. To be honest, one of my best goals never catch on camera was a free kick against Cavaliers back um thinking of 2018. One of my best free kick that best one of my best goals, but it never catch on camera. So now that goal I want to score against Umbrella and become my best goal, you know? Mm. That's a free kick. Yeah, that's a free kick. Alright, so tell me why you rate the goal this highly. Talk me through um, it. I mean if you watch oh my kick the ball, um me eat, me really aim half of the defender head. So once him see the ball I come towards him head, I'm going to duck. Because most, most players now go want to go in at that, especially if the ball comes so hard. So at that, at that technique they use to try to go off a of him head. Get, once he go by him head, there's no chance to keep, I can save it. Yeah. So the ball go with a curl. I understand? So, mm -hmm. yeah man, I just, I just me. I'm going to take it back a little bit. Because you used to attend Jamaica College. Yeah. Yeah, everybody knows the Jamaica College, a top football institution. Yeah, man. Enjoy a lot of success. You know, talk to me about your time at Jamaica College. How was life for you? <laughs> it was rough at Jamaica College at my time. And it's kind of rough, you know, because we have a man called Miguel Coley. You know, he demands a lot from you. You see, no matter what, you know, demands from you. You could have played one of the best games. I tell you, say, Yo, you need more. And that's when said, it's kind of tough. And, you know, when I young, them time, they saw. When him talk, I know me, even me know some play a good game and him say oh we need more for you. I'll go and go sit down and think about it and wonder what what what, what we need to work for and what we need to do is inside the kinda of tough. But it was a good season. We win the Oliver Shield and win the Manning Cup. We score uh, three goals for the season. Them time there. Play some play some good football them time there, in. So from there so people really start look for me because we score a goal against Trinity so people start realizing we can kick this ball. Uh. You feel like Miguel Coley played a Yeah man, he played a big, a big part in, in, my, in my career. You see, because him, as I say, demands. And me that player I like when he demands something. I like when people pressure me. Mm. And then I come and prove you wrong, you understand? Yeah. I like coach where I got demands and, and, and want and tell me, say, yo, I let me play a good game. Tell me, say, yo, I need more and this and that. I just, I just need that. So Coley is a, a big, big part of my career. You see, he made me turn a man, from a child to a man. You see, brave me up, do certain things, you hear that? Yeah, man. You were playing for Boys Town while you were at Jamaica College? Yeah, so I leave from Tivoli Gard to Jamaica College. So it was a transfer to, from Tivoli Gard High School to Jamaica College. But at the time, I was sitting out in 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was playing Premier League, Premier League for Boys Town. Yeah, and then... While at Jamaica College? While at, yeah, I was attending Jamaica College at the time and I scored like four goals in the Premier League that season and then, you know, Manning Cup coming up the other year. 
So my mind he turned to the, the Manning Cup and start focus on the Manning Cup because me really want to win this Manning Cup because it's out of my community. Um, I think most young players like once they reach to a Manning Cup final, they always win it. Dakasta Cup final, they always win it. Like I will be telling come from Rima when win Dakasta Cup and Manning Cup. So me do want the inner that. Mm -hmm. I want to be a part of that for you know, say, I come out of the community and I win Manning Cup to just like everybody. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, man. Rima here place as well. Yeah, so, true things everybody will fall out from Rima for play for Boyston. Yeah, man. I, 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 I will back here that, man. So, you know, mm -hmm. that's how it all starts from, you know. That's how we know, say, we can reach somewhere far. Yeah. So, I always big up Boyston. I always have to big up Boyston no matter what. You hear that? I'm a club that same way. Mm -hmm. My heart's still there. I mean, after Boystone, you played for Portmore United. You enjoyed a lot of success at Portmore United. I think you won the title twice. Yeah, I won it twice. Mm -hmm. win it the same year I got go Portmore. And the other season I win it with Portmore. Yeah, so I win two Premier League so far. Hopefully, we can win this one with Arnett Gard. You know, get this jungle rocking again. After you left Portmore United, you went and played for Bethlehem Steel in the USA. Talk to me about that transfer, you know, at the time, your first time moving to an overseas club. What was it like for you in that moment, you know, how the transfer came about, what type of impact it had on you, you know, in that moment, you, your family, you know, the community? I mean, um, the transfer came from a scout. Um, he was watching, he, he said he was watching me for like three years. Um, I mean, and I think I played a game against Anikar over here again. We won, we won um, the game 2 1. I give away a penalty. Like, and they scored a penalty. And like two minutes after the kickoff, we make one diagonal pass and end up assist. So the scout said that's what I do. He really appreciate that. I look very professional that way. They never drop mm -hmm. my head. And I'm looking thing there. So he said, um, he need me now. He's not going to wait no longer because he don't want nobody else. Like, come and grab me and see me and grab me. Mm -hmm. So he made the chance to come through as fast as possible. But the other week, I end up um, leaving and go back then the pre-season at um, Tampa, Florida with the I made a change of the first team one at the time, like the MLS team, and then I jumped down to the USL team. I signed a USL contract, I made a change of the first team. Yeah, so it was, a, it, was, it was a good experience, but at the time, my daughter had just born and we kind of feel weird because of the first time we did that um, go left for like my kids and she's so young and I feel that weird but I just tweet and I adapt to it and know say yo I come here for work and try to get for better for my daughter you see so mm -hmm. yeah man it was a great experience going to Bethlehem Steel and the first when the season start me kind of not used to the, the level mm -hmm. ball game and then like in towards the season, we get the understanding, we get the experience, we get exposure, we see what it takes. So we do a, we work on all of that. And then we get in get in towards the league now and yeah, we end up playing a good season. Yeah, cause I mean you scored some good goals as well. Giovanni Willis. They get one back, it sneaks under bed loop. Them say you want defensive midfielder. They're good at passing and tackling. Because you see I hit the diagonals in training earlier as well. Yeah. So that, that is a part of your game where, you know... Yeah, I mean, as a player, I don't mean, really play one way. Mm -hmm. It's not just diagonal, I can break the line and all them stuff. Because Kaka, Ricardo Kaka is my idol. I mean, he's, he's not a really defensive midfielder, but he's a player where he can tackle. He's a box-to-box -box midfielder. Mm -hmm. He can go and come. So that's my role, because Kaka is my idol, yeah. I can go and come. That, that role I did play a bit them still. Mm -hmm. I can play box to box because um, I don't know, right now if you watch Jude Bellingham, I always pop up late in the box and score some goal. And that made I do for Bethlehem still. Right. But unfortunately, I never did that, I never did that get the whole per chance like what Bellingham them I get and thing. But I did pop up late and the coach appreciate that for me. Mm -hmm. So yeah. What was like the most memorable moment for you playing for Bethlehem? When we scored a double, actually, um, <laughs> the double, the double come. Um, we played the first half. We down two nil, and I was playing as a six, oh, okay. defensive midfield. And the coach makes some change, and we lay in the change room, and he come to me and say, "Um, you're gonna put your strike." I'm gonna say, 
But before that, I was playing striking the chaining. I must score like six goals in the chaining. So maybe because I'm from the chaining, you know what I'm saying? Like, I play a 7v7, I could have played play strike and I score some goals. So maybe I say my finishing look good. So I'm going to test me. And I, I go up there, I score. I'm going to get two goals with Jardy game to all. Man of the match, player of the week. Midfielder turned striker. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But to be honest, I was a striker when I was younger. Yeah? Yeah, I was a striker. And under 17, I was a striker, me and Shamar Nicholson. Oh, okay. Yeah, we yeah. strike. We are strike partner. Like we score. He score, I think, 17 goals. I'm score 14. Yeah. Or 15. I don't remember, but it was a long time. But that uh, boy stone again. Yeah, we have played for Boston under 17. Mm -hmm. so, so I was a striker, and then we just switch back my position and go midfield. What's like the craziest thing that happened while you were playing for Bethlehem Steel? You know, like in terms of something we never expect. One of the experiences that I say is is going to the, the first team and training them and see the level and the intensity of the game is different. Mm. So that 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 was a like a real experience. I did some really build a momentum when we start training the first team because this ball now stop. Hey, you run, you now stop run, and you gas. I tell you, you're tired. So. 11 and the pace did so high and it did like faster than me. Sometimes I feel stop or hold my knee, I'm tired, you know. So that one, that one of the experience me to really appreciate because at first when we moved from Jamaica to Bethlehem, me to think we know it all mm -hmm. because me there Portmore, Portmore have some good coach, Andre Wa, Oris Reed. Trevor Thomas, them teach you a lot over there, understand? Mm -hmm. But I learned a lot from Portmore, but when me really go to Bethlehem Steel, there's a different level and a different set of training where, where by the time them show you, you just come to mind and say, wow, quick understanding. Ball game looks so simple. Mm -hmm. You understand? So a whole heap, a whole heap you can learn. Because me, the left, yes, and things I know it all, but I yeah. never know it all when I reach over there. You played for Union Omaha as well. Can you just talk to me about that experience as opposed to Bethlehem Steel? Well, Union Omaha was difficult in my first year. Not playing wise, but game time wise. Um, when we went to the preseason, um, before I leave, I talked to the coach and the coach said, um, we're one of the starting six. So, you know, you go with your mindset, say I start and when you reach and preseason finish and you know I start. The coach don't trust and don't believe in you. And the time I say I'm unfit and them something they give me some tests to do. I never, I never pass one of the tests them. I never pass one of the tests them. So I end up, he might use that against me. So I literally look upon him and go to him as a man and tell him, um, to be honest, the, the, the bag of test test not going to work because I'm not going to pass it. I go to him and tell him some more game, game time, match fitness. That's what I need, match fitness. And in, like, give me the match, match time, I get fit. Actually, I start play good. I start starting at the team. I sco start score. So I apologize to me and say, yo, I did make a mistake. I mean, I say, yo, and every time the coach is right. Sometimes the players mm -hmm. know. Remember, I know my body. Me know my body. So, yeah, but I understand where Ima come from. And Zin. So, yeah, it was, it was kind of difficult. But end of the day, him trust me after and start giving playing time, I score some goals, make two assists and thing. And yeah, it was a good season my first year and second year. It was a new, different guy, different, different guy, totally different guy. Coach come in, he bring in players them from wherever I come from. So it kind of hard for most of the players in my day from the year before. So my game time limited. You understand? And I end up, the season finish. I score one goal, I come on, I play like, like game number score, I score on cracker, like from way out, I score that goal there against Knoxville, I think. And he only gave me four minutes. But while he called me for going on the field, I was so mad, like pissed off, like I was so mad because me, I said, this guy not giving me, not, he not give me a chance to go out to the show what I can do. So when him called me, like, no, no, like Father God said, just go out there and do your thing. And while going on to the field, like, I was still mad. 
My first touch off the, off of the ball, all of that gone. I feel like I play 90 minutes. I look at my skin, I start sweat, I soak, and I've only four minutes I get. And I end up press one of the defenders, them, I pass it, I intercept it to the next one of my players, them, and I ball him out, ball out his name to just give me, the, give me back the ball. Because it's either more create or more square as it's something. Mm. Just want to do something. Yeah. To the little time I come on. I can give me back the ball and when I make the ball run over my foot and I turn, I look up, I have eight car space in front of me. Mm -hmm. I look on the keeper and I see my back off. Because my instinct is when the keeper see a, a players that come towards him to the goal and my back off, kick the ball. It's hard for him to save it, because my back up. Yeah. Once I kick it, make him make a save then. Just try to get it and target. So that was my thing now. I, I, I look up and see my back off. So there now, I just shoot. Eventually it going at the goal. And when I score, I feel so happy. Mm. And the same coach come to me, hug me up. I say, make an impact. But we already are late training. But the four minutes there, I just tell myself that I need to show this man here yeah, what I can do. You understand? So that's what I got to do. Yeah. Right now, I want you talk to me a bit more about life off the field while you were playing in America. Because, as I said earlier, you know, being in a new country, a lot of other aspects are kind of in, uh, interfere yeah. with you know your, how you perform on the field. So, was it easy for you to you know settle in in a new country yeah. and focus on the football? Yeah, man, it, 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 it is so easy to settle in because when I really come outside after practice, I go back straight into my house, call my kids, them, talk to them because as long as I'm on the phone, my kids are happy. Mm -hmm. You understand? I feel like I'm there on them, but I'm not far from them. I still feel like I'm there on them. I just depend on the phone with them, watch my TV, I cook. I'm a local chef. I'm now I'm cook my food, enjoy myself in my house. After a game, I'm a teammate, I go out and chill for, for a bit and then I go home. So life is kind of easy and alright over there. And then, you know, sometimes we get like a four, a four day break from training. We have to fly to New York and eventually link up with most of my friends and chill with them. So basically, I feel like I'm there home. Oh, okay. Because I see my friend them, I see people I know, I see, see Jamaican I can talk like Jamaican, I have to talk standard English. So basically, I adapt quick. Okay. So you understand? There are other football players there from Jamaica? Um, yeah, the first season was Kemal Malcolm. Uh, you know Kemal Malcolm? Yeah, man. That, cool. at your yeah, team. you see, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Me and him did that, you know, me and the dog raps. Good. Mm -hmm. Real G. Big up, big up yourself, my boy. He's in. So you don't know. The dog did that, you know, top chef too. A boy they call me and say, you're skinny. Because yeah. they call me skinny, you know. My teammate them over there call me skinny. He go over there and tell him, because I get a name in the national team, you know. Yeah. Skinny. So, yeah. They call me skinny. They call me phone and say, skinny, come for some pasta. <laughs> you see, because the man they eat healthy. When I'm cooking, he call me and say, you're some food, yeah. Yeah. You understand? So, yeah. You feel comfortable because you don't know. You have a, you have a job here can beside you. We yeah, had a touch for national team because I see you play. Um, for Jamaica from under 23 days, you yeah. know, and they made the progression and play for the senior team. They even score a couple goals for Jamaica. Yeah, I scored two. But I just want you to talk to me about, you know, the feeling of scoring for your national team. Actually, eventually start from over here, we play under 23 games, some under 23 games. And eventually I was the standout one and um, coach Tapa Whitmore eventually called me and told me, say, yo, oh, um, in like my performance, or my, or my performance at the under 23, so mm -hmm. my mind can look out for a national team call up. So I was like, wow, this is like a dream come true when he said that. I was so nervous, like literally nervous. I was nerve wracking. And eventually, in a, um, I think September, he called me up. Yeah. Like, I get an email say, I get called up towards the national team, like, cool bomb. Catch my skin, look for my skin, me and say, Jesus Christ, my call. Everybody at home, cause I was me there, I bet them still at the time. I'm telling them so I get national team call up. It's like mm -hmm. a dream. My call Boza at the same time because I'm already in the national team. I'm mean, telling them say, yo, bro, I get national team call up on the dog. I tell Tevin Shah my feed, cause I feel so happy. It's like more I tell everybody. Mm -hmm. You understand? And eventually them book the flight, I come to Jamaica, down at Mobile, and the first game that was done at Mobile and Second half, my ear top us to go warm. Me and a couple of the other man and like literally warming up, I was so nervous, like me didn't even know what to do, how to warm up. 
And then I see him call me that make it worse. And then he just look for me and say, son, when you go out there, the first touch, just make a decent pass and build a confidence. Eventually, that happened. My first touch, I make a nice pass and go back for the ball and get it and build up my confidence. And from there, I was a starting man. Transition day happened for you naturally. Naturally. Yeah. Because I was the coach said to you, just go out there, your first touch, mm -hmm. build a confidence. Yeah. And that happened. Over the years, we always hear a lot of, you know, talk, controversy around that name, Taylor Whitmore. I mean, personally, for you, somebody who, you know, play for him. You know, what's your take on Tapper as a coach? <laughs> um, to be honest, Tapper is a, is a good guy. Um, Tapper, Tapper is a, we I say, sneaking guy. Tapper with you somewhere in one corner and watch you, and you never know, so Tapper that I watch you. Yeah. That's how he is. But him drove around him players, them. Mm -hmm. Like juggling with Tapper. You don't never believe that this man has scored two goals in the World Cup for Jamaica. Mm -hmm. You understand, and like, he is a genius. Like, on the ball, this guy is a genius. Like, just, just imagine, you know, play with him, I just, I, I just juggle with him. But yeah, Tapa is a good, like, a good man. You guys have been a good season here at Arne Gardens. You know, make it, in, make it into the playoffs. First match against Portmore United. I mean, you have some good teammates like Kaim Dixon over here, so you have Fabian Reed. I mean, a good squad in a good moment. How are you guys feeling going into the playoffs? Well, to be honest, we body feel good. I think we're ready for it. Uh, mentally and physically ready for the, for the playoff game. Mm -hmm. um, we are prepared for it so far. But you don't know if we take one game at a time because the two games we are playing. Try to go out there and get this win. Because we know the fans are going to be behind me. So we have to try to give the fans what they want. So yeah, for this playoff here, yeah, think of mindset, ready for going at this and win it. Because it's been a while now and it's not in the Premier League. So yeah, so that's the focus right now. Personally for you, what are your objectives, you know, for the rest of the season? My thing is this, this season me as centre back. So my main focus is getting more clean sheet. Mm -hmm. um, because I play centre back for the club right now. So more clean sheet. I really focus on getting a lot of goal and assists. That would come naturally, but for now, I'm trying to get some more clean sheet on the mobile for now say yo. Because this is playoff. Once you lose, you're gone home. Mm -hmm. And once you don't concede, you can't go home. So that are the aim right now. I try my best. You know, so we'll get some clean sheet against Portmore the first leg and try to get another clean sheet the second leg. You see? But just one, you know, some striker score. From him score, I know some have my job to do. Because they have a pressure me running the back and say, them do them job already, so me need to do my job. So I talk to my back four and try to get our job done. So mm -hmm. that's the main focus right now. Because we don't, make, we don't want a team to score for me, because I have a team to score for me and I have, I have a level man behind the ball. Because nowadays the team them realize that so they can pass the ball and they are block off my side. Mm -hmm. So they are force it from the other defender side. But <laughs> they are going to get, when they, when they come, they are going to get something. So yeah, what's the price for them? Yeah, man, something in the pipeline for them, man. I just tell the club them to watch out for Kaim Dixon. Yeah, man, they have to watch out when I best finish and I come across, you know? Yeah. Two punch, side foot, volley. Anything, Ed, anything. Mm -hmm. Good talent, you know? All right. What are your plans for the you know, foreseeable future after this season? After this season, um, a, f a few clubs I try to reach out to me. So, you know, say, after this season, that's why in you know, this playoff, I want more going at the playoff with a momentum, with a great farm, try to get this clean sheet because, to be honest, I want to play ball overseas again. Overseas my mindset there. Go overseas. So after the season that that are the aim. Hopefully we can do good in the, 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 the playoff, try to get a chance to go back overseas. Mm -hmm. Understand? So that are my aim. More give a word of advice to the young ball of the out there, you know? Who look up to you as a person in a game, you know, who make it to a certain level, accomplish certain things. You, know, you play overseas, represent the national team. You know, you have a lot of experience, see some success. What kind of advice do you give to the younger generation? Well, the younger generation, we just say to you, um, just be patient, follow your dream, work hard, 
and time will tell. Believe in a God. Never, ever stop believing in that man there. God, and just be patient. Your time will come. Understand? Just keep, keep, keep your mindset free and just work hard. Work with what the coach say and just go out there to work and play on the best. You see? Because at the end of the day, you can reach far and help your family out in your life. So, yeah, so that's my thing to all younger ones, younger generation. You see, now, who look up to me? If you, if you look up to me and like the way I'm a play, you watch me more and see. And see how I play, you understand? Because he's a different type of player. So, he's a man, I love shoot. If you, love, if you can kick the ball, once you get a space, kick. That's how you're going to score. If you don't kick, you can't score. So, yeah. Just be patient and work hard. So you say, I'll go give you a little tutorial on the free kick them. Ah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, see it there you know, people. You know what time it is, you know. We're going to wrap it here now. We we'll appreciate the support, so continue to watch. Share the content. Drop some comments so who we'll want to see we interview next. You know, respect to Chavani Willis. For Fab, we're at Arnett. We're in a jungle. You know, a reason normal. Jungle is. Big up ball yard. Love one out of the ball, and hear that. Big up on yourself. Continue to put in the work. Mm -hmm. that. that is it. Respect you, know, bro. Yeah, man. Big up. All right, people. Until next time, we'll sign out from Jungle. That is it. Okay.